rolling. Live from Valley Forge, good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Pennsylvania Libertarian Organizational Workshop. Yeah. Thank you. My name is Ken Krawchuk, I will be your MC for the show. For those of you who don't know me, I was the Libertarian Party candidate for governor of Pennsylvania in 2002 and 1998. I am also currently the secretary of the, Liber of the Libertarian Party of Montgomery County. The Montgomery County LP is the sponsor of today's event. Let's give a hand for the Marco LP. <laughs> we have a very exciting time for you today. We have an exciting line of, of speakers. But we also had an exciting morning. We were supposed to start this several hours ago at our usual haunts at the Valley Forge Beef and Ale, valleyforgebeefandale.com, great hosts. But about 15 minutes before we were supposed to start, the furnace exploded. The building caught fire. We were out in the parking lot a little bit afterwards. So we're now relocated, maybe a mile away, at the Chadwick restaurant, government owned, sorry to say, but they have free Wi Fi. <laughs> Works for me. Our lineup, we have a tremendous lineup of speakers, some of the most amazing speakers in the southeastern <laughs> Pennsylvania area. Let me just run down the list of names. Luke Jassica, Jim Bad, Mike Salvi, Woo! Steve Sheets, Woo! Darren Wolf, N.A. Poe, Yo. and Steve Woo! Miller, yeah. and I think we're down the end of the list. And some of us will be up once or twice. Before we got into the, into the main agenda, I was asked just to introduce the subject matter. And our subject matter today is freedom. It's liberty. It's the Libertarian Party. And it's how you can make a difference if you decide that, like I have, that enough is enough and things must stop. You see, we Libertarians, we're different from the two old parties because we are the party of principle. Every law we support, every law we oppose can all be traced back to one central idea. The idea that your life is yours, that your property is yours, that you have the God-given inalienable right to live your life your way without interference, provided only that you respect the rights and property of others. That's it. That's what it means to be a libertarian. Your life, your way. And the voting public has reacted very strongly to this message. Since our founding in 1971, we have grown to become the third largest party, not only in America, not only in Pennsylvania, but also here in Montgomery County. Hands down the third largest party, outnumbering all of the other third parties put together. Yes. I've been in this movement almost 20 years now, and I'll tell you, it's very, very heartening to see the kind of acceptance our ideas are getting today whether it's Ron Paul on the national scene, Jim Babb on the local scene, or anybody in between. It's very, very heartening to see it. Because I remember when I first started back in the early 90s, I would tell people, I'm a libertarian. They'd say, oh, well, I'm Presbyterian. <laughs> Those days are gone. Now we got everybody calling themselves a libertarian, even some people who aren't libertarians. Oh. But we'll take it, we'll take it. It's better than being ignored like we used to. Now the agenda today, we've broken it up into several different segments. We're going to have a couple speakers in each of the segments. The first segment is called Fun with Liberty. Second segment, Libertarian Solutions to Common Problems. Nobody is running for office, a how-to. Then, if you really want to get involved, how you too can become part of the Libertarian Party. Not just a member, not just a voter, but actually part of the leadership structure. And then at the end, we're going to have a round table of some of our speakers to discuss libertarian issues. That's our agenda. So sit back, grab a beer, or whatever it is you like to grab, and we'll get started. Our first speaker is a man with a resume incredibly long. He is the past chair of the Pennsylvania Libertarian Party. He's also the past chair of the New Jersey Libertarian Party. And right now, what he's doing, he decided He's tired of the media waiting for him, waiting. He's tired of the media not 
publishing his things. So he decided to take matters into his own hands. What he did is he formed his own media, WBIG in Wilkes-Barre, and he's here to tell us today how to be the media. Please join me in welcoming Lou Jessica. Thank you, Ken. You're welcome. Anything worthwhile uh, starts in uh, Montgomery County. It's been uh, it's been many years that I've uh, been doing stuff down here, whether it's uh, eminent domain, uh, certainly been going to the uh, Montgomery Hospitality Suite, the world famous Montgomery. Yeah. How many years has that been, guys? 18 this 18 year. 18 years. Uh, our joint uh, convention with New Jersey and Pennsylvania, and uh, it, it's just a pleasure to be down here, it really is. I mean, uh, um, you guys are the cra uh, cradle of uh, libertarianism, and uh, uh, Montgomery County uh, has uh, been long known, not only in Pennsylvania for that, but uh, really around, around the states. Um, what I wanted to talk about today, and, and once again, I, I said things start here in Montgomery County. This is uh, really the first time I'm going to be speaking about uh, launching what we call the WBIG. Um, uh, it's the Independent Gazette. Uh, it started in Wilkes-Barre, but really what it's all about, it's about a brand, it's about seeking the truth, and uh, um, it's way more than just a newspaper. Uh, we started a radio show. Uh, we're looking to uh, move into not just videos, but TV, uh, the online store, and uh, what uh, I hope to uh, let people know is, is how we can get this into your communities. Um, it's all about education, like I said. It's about uh, eternal publicity. Uh, when we leave here today, um, I need to go over to Trenton. We're going to uh, bring the independent Trenton edition, uh, bring it into urban areas. That's what we want to do. It's, we, we do want to uh, uh, start educating what uh, I, I, I like to say is the uninformed. Uh, the price of freedom is eternal vigilance. The price of justice is eternal publicity. Uh, for those that have been around the libertarian movement, knows who that is. That's Julian Heichlin uh, yeah. talking about Peter and uh, what that's all about. Um, and, and, and like I was saying before, one of the things that we have and one of the abilities we have when we're putting out the paper is our articles. Here's the, an article about, uh, you know, would you jail Rosa Parks? And what we do is we grab people's attention and we turn, we, we, we turn it into talking about Fiji and what's, what's that all about. What's unique about what we've done also is, is we're a blank canvas right now. Um, it's growing. Uh, the way we're doing the paper, how we're affecting our local area and how we plan on affecting uh, areas around the country. Uh, we utilize uh, an already very active local group. Uh, uh, they go out and deliver the newspaper for us. And, and for the most part, it's been absolutely overwhelming the, um, the, the response that we've gotten. Uh, recently at a uh, Luzerne County uh, a council meeting, I don't know how many people have come up, people that have been active going to these meetings uh, come up and say, listen, we are so happy that you know somebody is finally printing the truth, getting it out there. We've been trying for years to get it out. And anybody that's familiar with uh, Pennsylvania or certainly Northeast Pennsylvania, the cronyism, the capitalism, the capitalism, right? The cronyism, the uh, patriotism uh, is, is just overwhelming. And you just can't get things in the news. You just, you just can't. And, and like I said, it's, it's, it's been overwhelming the response. And, and uh, just recently we did an article uh, um, on uh, what we call the uh, Kings and Queens of Wilkes-Barre, and uh, some of the things that we brought up is uh, the, once again the nepotism. And uh, when me and John DiLoberto over here were uh, handing the papers out, uh, we were approached by some local people, and, and they certainly seemed like they were part of the, uh, the police establishment. And they told us, you know, because of the articles that have been being put out, I mean, we have the FBI involved, the CIA supposedly involved. They said, uh, well, we have the Secret Service watching. And, and the one thing they said to us was, do us a favor, make sure you stay armed. So obviously we're making a, making a difference. And like I said, uh, even though we've had an overwhelming response, it's not everybody that likes this, let me tell you. Uh, here's a letter we just got, in the, and, and the individual told us, we dare you to print this. 
Well, I guarantee you, folks, the next next issue, this is going to be uh, uh, right in the middle of it. It says, don't deliver your radical newspaper to my property. I did not order it. I don't want it. Uh, here's my First Amendment right to free speech. I think your newspaper is garbage, and if the Wilkes-Barre citizens wanted you gadflies in office, they would let you. F you and your newspaper, keep it off my property. So we're going to be glad to uh, print that into our love letters uh, uh, to the uh, Independent Gazette. Um, so what I really want to talk about is uh, why, uh, why we are doing what we're doing, uh, what, you know, what we're up against, uh, how it got started, that's, that's pretty important, and uh, how we're having uh, an impact on our local media, and uh, certainly how we're going to have an impact uh, moving forward, and finally how uh, people here and around the country could be part of what we call the WBIG, start your own paper, uh, be the owner of your own paper, and uh, so forth and so on. So uh, why did we start this? Uh, I think Ken just mentioned this uh, briefly. Uh, personally, I got sick and tired. I got sick and tired of uh, looking for the scraps that we get. Uh, you know, perhaps, you know, oh my God, you know, they mentioned this in the newspaper, like we're supposed to be jumping for joy. Uh, this is a, a, one of our local newspapers up there, the Times Tribune. And um, here's an article about Order the General. Not once did they mention Betsy Summers, even running. Not like even, oh, by the way, the person in your backyard that's been around here, activist uh, her whole life, is also running for Auditor General. So I, that, that had to be one of the motivations. And I got to tell you, after this uh, uh, 2000, uh, this past election here, I, I just said it was enough. I mean, um, you know, looking back uh, as far as the media goes and not, not giving you any attention, uh, it was a couple of years ago, I was running the Jason Shura campaign, uh, and, and we were involved in New Jersey, and it was for the Clean and Fair Election Program. Well, let me tell you something. A lot of people, a lot of people in the Libertarian Party weren't really happy that we were even involved with this, but if, if, if you don't get involved, in, at, at least uh, as far as I'm concerned, you, you're never going to make a, any kind of changes, especially uh, w with the establishment. And, and one of the things that happened was, was that we had certain criteria. And, and to be part of this program, we needed to get 800 signatures. Now, I know folks going around, people are familiar with getting 800 signatures, but to be part, to be part of this, we also had to collect a $10 donation with each one of those signatures to qualify. Well, I got to tell you, both me and Jason, I mean, for four months went door to door. I mean, some days we only got maybe one signature a day with that $10 donation, but by God, we, we made it. And, and, and they did a pilot program, and there was only uh, 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 three, three, three districts that they actually uh, um, used this pilot program, and the Republicans didn't even qualify on one of them because the criteria was so hard. But we stayed on it. And my point was this, is, is that one of the, once you qualified, you were supposed to be in, in, in the debates with the other candidates that were running. That was one of the things. Well, lo and behold, we were in debates. But the televised debates by News, News 12, you know what they told us? There's no room at the table for you guys. The Princeton Packet, you know what they told me? We're not writing about you no matter what you do. So this has been a long time thing coming. This, we've been motivated at this for a long time. So what are we up against? I had a video here we were going to show, part of our radio show, and I think it's going to be spliced in, but at the end of the day, 90% of our media is owned by six corporations. Think about that. And, and we talk about the faux news and all these other things, but it's just not the news. And I think that's what people don't understand. It's just not like you're going to turn on and, and watch Fox, Fox News or CBS News. It's everything you and our children are watching. You know, we got, we got uh, GE, they own Comcast, NBC, Universal, Focus Features, The News Corp is Fox, Disney, ABC, ESPN, Pixar. And, and it goes on and on. Viacom, MTV, Nick, Nick Jr., Time Warner, uh, Warner Brothers, and CBS, Showtime, Smithsonian Channel, NFL.com, Jeopardy, 60 Minutes. And the point is, is, is that we don't stand a chance. We really don't stand a chance unless we own our own media, unless we become our own media. And that's what we're doing. So how did this start? And how did this all come about? Well. It was last year, like I said, after the election, I, I just got tired of it, you know, uh, driving around and uh, I was with Gary Johnson getting 1% of the vote. 
And then afterwards, we're talking about you need $25 million, $40 million to, to be relevant. I, I, I saw what happened with Betsy Summers, and I, I, I started thinking, I said, we need to have our own media, and, and uh, um, sorry, <laughs> we need to have our own media and, 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 and just move ahead in that direction. So that's what we did. So, so, so what happened? The first thing we did was, uh, right after in, in November, went to the local radio station and, and we sat down with them and I, I pitched them a, uh, a program, it's called Sanity Check. And uh, you know, there, there's a lot of people that don't necessarily like um, or think maybe the way I think, but I, I, I think more of a big tent type thing and I, and I rather people get to know our ideas and, and educate them than just try to, just try to I guess, uh, stuff, stuff philosophy down their throat. So what we did is uh, I pitched them with an idea called Sanity Check, Libertarian Lou and uh, Tea Party Mike. And what we do is uh, we get on the radio and we talk about all kinds of, all kinds of issues, issues that are not normally talked about uh, perhaps on, on most of your radio shows. I mean, we're talking Agenda 21, we're talking, uh, you know, the, the, the Federal Reserve, uh, eminent domain, all, all kinds of neat stuff. And then the second part of it was, um, we, we stopped over Jim Babs' house, and we asked Jim for his help. <laughs> Once again, uh, you know, he's always there to help, and he always has been, and, and Jim, you're in the audience here today, and I, I want to I thank you again, because, uh, Without your help, perhaps maybe this thing didn't get off the ground. I mean, you uh, spent a lot of time, and, and, and so we started moving ahead. I mean, uh, uh, we, we, we got our radio show, they loved it. Um, of course, you have to pay for it, and that's all part of it. That's all part of owning your own media and, and owning your own message. Is, uh, that was $1,500 a month, and we stayed with that for a while until we became a little bit more popular. Told them we couldn't pay for it no more, and lo and behold, Guess what? I mean, we have, we're not doing that anymore, and, and now we're looking for more time. And uh, so anyway, so we were in business, right? I mean, we, we, we got our paper off the ground, we got the radio started. Well, well, not quite. There's a lot more work to getting the paper started than people might think. Our, our first edition came out, and uh, um, I got to tell you, competition makes for better news coverage. Um, even, in, even though there's a small paper and, and the way it started, uh, we really started forcing the major papers to start taking notice. Uh, they want to have the scoop. They want to. They want to know about what's going on, and, or or be the first one to get the print. You guys hear it all the time, man. We got the scoop. We're the first ones to get it out there. Well, we started doing that, and uh, so we made some conscious decisions about how we wanted to do our newspaper, what we wanted in it, and, and one we uh, we want a hard. We wanted some hard hitting uh, local content. And then we wanted to educate people on articles, like I said, the Fed, Feed your Agenda 21, Second Amendment, nullification. As you read our papers, and folks, you could go online and you can look at it online, or people here have uh, uh, our papers, uh, you'll, you'll be able to see uh, exactly what we talk about, and, and uh, I think you'll find a lot of them very thought-provoking. And then we wanted some uh, feel-good issues. We want people to read it, and like I said, we don't want to beat people over the head with philosophy. We want people to come and just start, just start listening, because I know we have the right message. We all know we have the right message, so how do we do that message? So, uh, you know, we started talking about pets. Uh, Betsy Summers, we have a great article in there about her, about going out to uh, New Mexico, doing, you know, doing the work that she always does uh, with animals, uh, volunteering, uh, and, and uh, so forth and so on. And then we, um, you know, we wanted to brand certain candidates, individuals. And uh, when you look at our paper, that's, that's really important too. Whether it's Betsy Summers, Anthony Antonello, uh, local, local people. We want, we want our local people to know about our candidates, about who we are outside of the politics. We want them to know that, you know, we're just like them. Uh, except that perhaps maybe we have a little different uh, uh, philosophy. So, uh, uh, and finally, we just had some fun stuff in our, uh, our in our newspapers. Uh, so, so to be successful, you're going to need to gain some credibility. We were lucky in Northeast Pennsylvania to get this thing kicked off because we've been around not only for a while. The media liked us. We ran some great campaigns. Uh, some of our candidates uh, in three-way races. As a matter of fact, uh, consistently now somewhere between. 12 and 15 percent in, in hard-fought three-way races uh, running as libertarians. That's not our goal, obviously, but it was a start, and the media knew who we were. 
we were in front page I don't know how many times, way more than I think the average uh, uh, libertarian would get in, in, in the local paper. So, so we started off with a pretty good, um, we started off with some pretty good uh, uh, credibility as, as far as that went. Uh, so some of our signature stories, that the ones that we wanted to talk about were some of our local stories. That's, that's how we were going to get people to know who we were and uh, what the paper was all about. So uh, we started printing stories. One is about lag towing. Now, th that, that's a local area. You guys don't know anything about it, and, and nor do you probably really care about it. But what it was all about was a, was a, uh, a tow company, a predatory tow company. And in and, and our first issue, uh, people started coming forward. We asked people to come forward. And do they have, um, you know, did, did, did they have any kind of problems? And sure enough, our phone started ringing off the hook. Our second issue, um, we printed some of those stories, and lo and behold, the guy from Lag Towing shows up at the city council meeting. He has, a, has an article from the Independent Gazette there saying we're picking on him. And, uh, uh, and, and yet we had all the proof. The, 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 the rub here was, was that he had actually testified in court that all his records were destroyed. Uh, they destroy their records every 30 days. Isn't that great? And uh, and, and so what we said was, well, how come you showed up? He showed up with this packet and records from 2008. This just happened recently. So we went to the DA and we said, wait a minute, you better start filing perjury charges. So lo and behold, I'm not going to stay on to this one. We were on this for a year. These are the local papers right now. Look at that. Cash for Kids. Oh, no, we had the Cash for Kids. Sorry. Cars for Cash. Front page. There you go. That's the one page paper there. Here's another one. Fit to be towed front page on the other local newspaper. And it didn't stop. Who's in, who's out, front page, leg towing. So what's happening is, is that what we're influencing what the mainstream media is bringing about. Nice. The same thing happened also with what we call baloney gate. Uh, we got tipped off from uh, the, the, uh, uh, the guards in the prison that the, the warden was uh, eating high on the hog, uh, courtesy of uh, Luzerne County uh, uh, taxpayers. So we did an article about Baloney Gate, and, and once again, you can see that online and see what we're doing there. So sure enough, all of a sudden, the papers start printing Baloney Gate. So it, 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 doesn't, it didn't stop. And, and, and probably the, the one that probably got us the most uh, uh, press and stuff like that was a, a story that we did on uh, uh, the kings and queens of Wilkesbury. And we actually called out the mayor and his family and what we called uh, uh, the Majakuses. So I'm getting a red flag here, and uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap this up real quick. At the end of the day, though, um, we, we have a program that can bring this into your community. We want you folks to have the newspapers. We want people there to, uh, uh, we, we have a whole business plan to show you how you could bring your paper in, in not only just the newspaper, but radio shows, and how you could really influence what's happening in, uh, um, in your local communities. Any questions? Go ahead. Um, what was your starting circulation and what's your current circulation? We, repeat the question, please. The uh, starting circulation was 5,000. We're still at 5,000. Uh, and now, uh, except that um, when you go online, we also have an online presence, and that's growing. Uh, we tie it also into uh, the radio show now and uh, Wake Up Wilkesbury, which has about 1,200 eyes on it every day. And uh, it, like I said, it, it, it's really... Uh, um, uh, uh, getting traction in our local area. How do you, uh, what's your distribution like? Do you have people doing home delivery or is it? We do. And, that, and that's another thing. And, and when you look about, uh, you know, people running candidates, uh, so forth and so on, uh, we use the, the same local uh, activists that we've had for a while. And, and that's growing too. Because what's happening is, is people are getting the paper. And for the most part, except for like the letter I just read to you guys, uh, for the most part, people are wanting to be involved. I mean, it's it, it's it, it's a snowball situation right now. It's, it, things are starting to snowball and, and, and just taking off. Go ahead. Um, are you breaking even money-wise for ads and production? Costs? Yes. And and what we're going to do right now also is is uh, later on today, or if anybody's interested, a little later on is uh, oh, what do we lose this battery? Hello, hello, we're back. <laughs> um, uh, we, we, we can sit down and uh, certainly, uh, like I said, we're going over to uh, uh, Trenton later on, signing the contract, and we're moving it into uh, Trenton. 
and uh, certainly we could uh, be more than happy to, uh, or contact us if you want to learn more about what you can do as far as bringing a newspaper in and the advantages of being part of the WBIG. Uh, you know, I, I, there's a lot of costs, initial costs that come up, there's a lot of work. Uh, anybody that's done this, Jim Babdeff certainly knows there's a lot more work to this than meets the eye of just turning out a newspaper. So if you have some some background help where people could do, you know, a lot of some of the content stories, do the layout, do your graphic design, so forth and so on, it, it's fantastic. Uh, also now that we've been in business for over a year, we've just now applied to the Pennsylvania Paper Association and that will cover us from the libel situations and getting sued and, and all this other happy stuff uh, um, because I'm sure that's coming down the road because what we talk about and, and who we uh, are, 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 are you know, investigating, I mean we're investigating the judges I, and, and it, it just goes on and on so I, I wouldn't be a bit surprised that we uh, get a little blowback as they say. Go ahead, Jimmy. Uh, Lou, if other people wanted to start their own newspaper, could they contact you? And if so, how can they reach you? Well, uh, just certainly WB Independent Gazette. Uh, my number uh, uh, five seven zero. What is what is what I, I is that a uh, uh, what's what's a, you know when you have a cell phone sometimes you don't even remember your oh good I'm glad it stopped. Hello, hello. Okay, we're back. Uh, certainly, uh, lou.jasikoff at wbindependentgazette.com. Uh, we're all over the net. I mean, uh, anybody just uh, uh, Google us and uh, I would be more than happy to come visit or send you the information. But I got to tell you, this is the way we could really influence what is going on just in your communities, but how you could really influence your candidates and how you could really make an impact. I mean, just think if this was throughout Pennsylvania. I mean, we have people that are, you know, looking to run for governor or, or even in your local, uh, you know, regional zones. I mean, all of a sudden, you, you know, you, you, have a, uh, you have a network of papers that can start printing stuff out. And, and I guarantee you, what happens is, is they pick it up. I mean, our paper was not in, it didn't come out for four hours, and we were already visited by code enforcement. <laughs> I, I'm serious. I mean, you know, so I mean, we definitely have we definitely have people's attention. And what's happening more and more, we're getting even more attention. I mean, like when we go now to say city council meetings, uh, uh, these city council meetings used to have four or five. Anybody that that goes to city council meetings, you know, you need a ticket to get into Wilkesbury at this point anymore. And 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 just you know, after the the kings and queens of Wilkesbury, and just to give you a little uh, uh, little background on that. Um, I actually spoke at the uh, city council meeting. Uh, the mayor thought it was a joke that they were laying off uh, uh, 11 firefighters. And, and, and what happened was, is, uh, uh, I, I got up there and talked and I said, Mr. Mayor, I said, you think this is a joke? I said, you think this is a laugh riot? People are getting laid off? I said, you need to lead the way. I said, just last, month, last, last summer, you were brought up on ethics charges. You, you hired your kids uh, uh, to work. I said, you just got your, your son a job at the, uh, at the school board. I said, your one brother is in probation, your other bro brother is in domestic. I said, your cousin is the chief of police, and your other cousin is a solicitor. And I said, you think this is a joke. And, and I, when I tell you, this is the epicenter for, for nepotism up in Northeast Pennsylvania. Maybe there's other places like this. But the point is, is that people are listening. And you know what made it really powerful? It wasn't just me talking. I said, guess what? We're going to make you the story. Good now. And it came out, and we, and we printed that was the headline story for, for, for uh, the Independent Gazette. So, we back? Yeah. That could be me. Maybe. I, I always have these problems. I have these effect on me. So, your magnetic personality. My magnetic personality. There you go. Who, uh, any other questions, guys? Or uh, are we done? We're done. Go ahead. Yeah, just real quick. What's your online presence like for your radio show? Do you put your radio show online at all? Yeah, and, and, and uh, we do. Yep, and uh, it's 94.3 FM to talk, and, and, that, and that's another point. It's it's uh, um, a, it's, just, it's a big radio station. It's not like you know, like a, a, a whatever. You know, it gets a lot of it gets a lot of coverage. It carries uh, all the. The Hannity's and little bins until we bump them off, until we go on. That's it, guys. Thank you.